speak from here so that I can see all of you. Magandang umaga po. Fa Bishop uh, Juan Dios Pueblos, my good friend, Father Melvin Castro, whom we just heard, and of course, uh, our firebrand, Dr. Ligaya Costa of Human Life, and one of the most effective voices that we hear in every corner of the country now, Dr. Joseph Bolliser. <laughs> and all of you comprising this conference, lay leaders, there are priests here, and uh, the common denominator is that we are all anti-RH, right? Yes. Whatever we're all coming from, basta tayo alam natin ang katotohanan. After three days of conference, I'm sure you have heard all the arguments and exposure of the half-truths in this particular issue. I'd like to just add a little more on the economic uh, aspect because this is what the government has been really consistently and persistently pounding on, that we will never progress unless we really control the number of children. Dr. Cho presented to all of us the basic truth that the whole world now is really disintegrating on the number of children being born, while the Filipinos are maintaining. On the other hand, let us see what is happening to them by their population control. They're also slowly suffering economic depression. Europe is one of the most problematic areas now in the world as far as the economy is concerned. America is experiencing the same thing. The whole Western world, for that matter. Asia is the hope of the world today. And the Philippines is in the center of Asia. I'm not tired. We are strategically positioned, created by God to be so. And tayo sa gitna ng economic region of the world. So why are they all concentrating on us now? Simply because they know the important significance of what and how the Filipinos can really function in the face of all of this. Kaya de lahat ng population control agencies, lahat ng gobyerno na may kinalaman sa pag control ng bilang ng tao nandito ngayon sa Pilipinas. Ako, I will not be surprised if one of the main topics discussed between Secretary Clinton and our President was the RH bill. Siguro sinabi sa kanya, ano ba? You promised us that this will be passed already. And he probably fumbled for an answer because he was still busy with GMA. <laughs> and there are so many, so many other but the point is, I'd like to stress to you what I have learned from the Department of Environment. God will be that I would take this position and handle this department. I know so that I may be armed with more arguments against population control. How rich the country in all the needs of man. Kung merong bansang talagang tunay na pinagpala, ang Pilipinas sa kalikasan. Sibili, pagkaliit-liit natin, we are one of the top five countries with the rich mineral resources. Gold, the number one precious metal required by the world economy is abundant in the Philippines. Yung lahat ng mineral halos na kailangan ng industriya ng mundo nandito sa atin. Ang China, pagkalaki-laki, hindi makakakumpare sa atin with these resources that we have. So therefore, we have what it takes to sustain even a 200, 250 million <coughs> Filipinos eventually if we handle our resources properly. Water, which is now a, scarce, uh, a scarcity in many parts of the world, Singapore doesn't have water. Hong Kong doesn't have fresh water. Although they may be, they, they are economically uh, 
better off than the rest of us, but they do not have fresh water supply. Singapore is now resorting to recycling their wastewater. They are now drinking the water that comes from their toilets. <laughs> By, a, of course, a te perfected technical way of purifying it once again. But we have not reached that point at all, simply because we are blessed with an abundance of this number one requirement in the world. We have a, an average annual volume of about 144 billion cubic meters of fresh water annually. And we consume only about 28 billion of this. More than 100 billion is just wasted. We may not realize it, but water is now more expensive than gasoline. Gali kami ni Beng sa Las Vegas. Anood kami nung I joined my adopted son, Manny Pacquiao, in his fight. I had to drink water in my, in my tension and my... And every time I asked for a bottle of water, I had to pay $2.50 per bottle. Sipi nyo, eh gasolini, hindi naman ganun kamahari. So if we just handle our abundant supply of fresh water, we can supply Hong Kong, Singapore, and the rest of Asia with this prime commodity and be like the Middle East. So, kung meron silang gasolina, meron tayong tubig. Baka sila bibili sa atin ng tubig, bumili tayo sa kanila ng gasolina. And there'll come a time when water will become usable even to run engines, but then we have an abundance of this. It's coming from nature, it's coming from God. But we must learn how to handle these resources properly. You talk about aquaculture. Aquaculture, eh dito sa Pilipinas, pwedeng iproduce lahat ng ulam nakakainin ng buong mundo on seafood. You, studies have been made on this by the World Food Organizations that we have enough waters to, to really cultivate uh, aqua life so that we may be supplying those who do not have this. We are at the apex of the core, what is called as the coral triangle wherein tuna is still abounding and the rest of, of uh, fisheries are still present. Tuna is already disappearing in the rest of the world, but in the Philippines we still have tuna. Napaka important yan. Pero kung aabusihin natin, mawawala na ang tuna. Kung aabusuhin natin ang tubig, maduming-maduming ang ating mga karagatan, ang ating mga lawa, ang ating mga ilog, sapa, mawawala yan fresh water supply. Kung yung ating mga mineral hindi natin aalagaan at talagang gagabitin para sa katakanan ng bayan at pababayaan natin yung sumisira ng kalikasan, sumisira ng, ng industriya sa kanilang pagmamalabis at sa corruption, eh hindi rin natin pakikinabangan ito mga ito. I just would want, I want that added to your information today coming from a uh, somebody like us who have studied the natural resources of the country. I am very fond of saying, it's sa atin lang makikita ang pinakamaliit kayo sila sa buong mundo, di ba? Doon sa Lake Bui. Dito rin makikita ang pinakamalaking sila sa butat yung butang ding sa Sorsogon. Yung pinakamaliit na usa nandito rin sa atin. Yung pinakamalaking uh, bulaklak yung Raflesia, nandito rin sa atin. Pinakamaliit na Tsonggo, doon sa Bohol. Yung mga, marami pa, tabi, yung pinakamalaking buhaya, dito rin ang hila. Buhaya. Buhaya hindi sa kalikasan, buhaya ng hipunan. Both in the government and in the private sector. So, we must take note of this as these are the data that we have to put together to realize what can we do to really put once and for all behind us this issue of population control which is coming from the outside, not from within. It is imposed on us. It is plano ng mga makapangyarihan at mayayamang bansa. Sinentro Pilipinas, hindi dapat dumami ang tao dito sapagkat alam nila ang dumaraming tao gamitin lang ang tama at gawin ang tama, magpapaunlad ng bansa. Europe experienced that in the Industrial Revolution of the 1700s. 
America experienced that. When they were booming in their population, their economy equally boomed. A growing population handled properly with effective governance equals economic boom for the nation. So alam nila na pag dumami ang Pilipino, we will become not only a saling pusa in the world economy, but a major player in it. There come a time when our natural wealth, which is still untapped today, will become theirs as they are now enjoying it through their own manipulations. Why are they interested in population control, controlling the growth of, pe of people? Simply because growth of people is directly related to economic development. And that's why the United Nations, the Population Control Fund, and all the other wealthy nations are grouped together to stop us from growing in numbers. This is even biblical. I'd like, you, I'd like to point this out to you if you do not have not read it yet. Read Exodus chapter 1, where the first population control was conceived and implemented by the wealthy ruling nation where the king of Egypt ordered the killing of the, or rather the abortion, the aborting of the Israeli babies. And the rest is, of course, uh, not only biblical, but historical, but God protected those who protected his creation. So all of you will be given due protection and blessings because we are fighting for the creation of God Almighty. And dito po sa ating trabaho ngayon, alam natin kung saan nagagaling ang problema. Alam natin ang gobyerno ang problema. Dapat natin, dapat tayong gumawa ng problema plan of action na tutumbukin natin kung saan dapat natin bigyan ng pansin. According to the National Security Study Memorandum which we are now in, in possession, they, the plotters of population control of the world, strictly emphasize we must make their governments, kasama Pilipinas na push for population control. Not us. Tayo may pakana ang pagawin natin yung kanilang mga political leaders, yung kanilang gobyerno. Otherwise, we will be branded as nothing but imperialists. Kaya, all these years, you review, saan ang galing ang problema? Saan ang gagaling ang problema? Sa gobyerno. Because, ang population control program pinadadaan sa gobyerno. Nagsimula ito noong 1976. Sino ang presidente noon? Presidente Marcos. We were under martial law. So he pushed for population control as dictated by the wealthy nations. After Mr. Marcos, dumating si Pangulong Cory. Si Pangulong Cory rejected population control. I am a witness to that. I was a member of her cabinet. And, in fact, she appreciated my position of being a pro-lifer in the group. Sabi niya nga sa akin, ano ka ba? Opus Dei ka ba? I couldn't come up. Regular thinking Filipino, Catholic Filipino. Kaya, kontra po ako dyan. So she rejected it. Wala tayong masyadong problema during the core years. Dumating si President Ramos. He was open to population control. Diyan nag-umpisa yung panibagong reproductive health bill in Congress. Where was it coming from? From the office of the president. From our national leaders. But we reacted. Oh, we, we remember fondly the reaction of Cardinal Sin when he really emphatically said no. And we will do everything we can to stop the plans of Secretary Flavier. I remember the rally we had in Luneta where the good cardinal really, really said that with a clear, loud message, Ituloy ninyo yan, dalabang kami. Kami mga katoliko. Mabuti pang magtali ka na lang ng gilingan sa leeg mo. Sabi niya kay Secretary Flavier, that was a direct message from the cardinal. Magtali ka na lang ng gilingan sa leeg mo, lumundag ka sa Manila Bay. 
rather than itulang mo yung population control mo. But we had a problem because the president of the country then was for it. He accepted the NSSM mandate, National Security Study Memorandum of the Wealthy Nations. Then came President Estrada. Uh, since he didn't have much time, <laughs> hindi niya napag-ukulan ng pansin ang problema. At palagay ko, hindi rin susunod si Pangulong Estrada dahil una-una, dami niyang anak eh. <laughs> Pangalawa, hindi siya sumunod dun sa Muslim direction. When he was being ordered to stop his Muslim offensive by President Clinton, he did not follow and he said, I have already decided to go all out against the Muslim problem and no one can stop me now. So with that position of our president, probably the Americans felt we can ask him to go on a population control now. Dito, tinatanggihan tayo. Mapapahiya rin tayo rito. Then came President Gloria. Because President Gloria took a very strong open position by saying and stating loud and clear, if Congress passes the Reproductive Health Bill, I will veto it. That was a very committed statement. So therefore, hindi nila na itulak. Ngayon, dumating ngayon ang ating Pangulo. Napalagay ko isa sa mga unang-unang may pangako ay passage si Tumbil na ito. Kaya, nandito tayo ngayon. I am stating that the problems comes from comes from the government and no less than the national leader of our country. So what can we do? I would really emphasize to you today. We must, number one, participate in all of these discussions. We must make it very clear in our minds how bad and how wrong, fundamentally wrong, this proposed law and how destructive it would be for all of us. Fundamentally, because it's against the law of God. It's against our faith. It's against everything that we stand for as a nation and as a people. It's against our values. And it will break up our society as it will break up the family and our relations, primarily the valuing of life. So, kailangan tanggapin natin yung hamon na tayo tumanggi. Paglabas natin dito sa konferensya ito, hindi ito dapat matapos sa ating sarili lang. Ah, alam ko na lahat ng isyo ngayon. Kailangan, umpisa natin sa ating pamilya, sa ating barangay, sa ating uh, mga kaibigan, sa lahat ng ating maaabot. Sabihin natin ang katotohanan na tayo lumaban, tumanggi, manindigan. Itong ating topic ngayon, surrender is not an option. Correct. Ba't tayo papayag? E sumantalang ito'y talagang hindi matin katanggap-tanggap at hindi natin matatanggap. And compromise. Yung sinasabi na iba, hindi kumahanap-hanap tayo ng, ng paraan para yung method ninyo at saka yung method namin pagsamayin sa isang small as board table. Sabi nga, Father Benvin. You see, we are not promoting a method. We are promoting a culture of life. A way of life. Open to life. Never a method. The natural way of life is not a method. Don't make that mistake. I was very happy to hear Father Melvin state that, as I have always been advocating the same. Catholics should never really accept the claim of the other side that we are just contesting the method. We have no method. What the issue it concerns with is that it is against our very fundamental faith and belief in our religion, and in our church, and the Almighty, the only source of life. Kailangan ilagay natin sa ating agenda ngayon, hindi lamang pagtanggi, kundi active rejection of this proposed bill. And if they persist in it, let us keep on resisting it. Alam ko namang lahat tayo disidido, if they pass it, in spite of the efforts of congressmen like Congressman uh, Nograles and our good senators. We're fortunate to have Senator Soto 
and the majority floor leader and the Senate president, Senator really one of the most enlightened politicians that I see now. I am very, very impressed and happy with it. But nagdumusot yan dahil pinilit ng Malacanang, ipaglaban natin sa Korte. Pag inatalo pa rin tayo sa Korte, ipaglaban natin sa ating tahanan. Huwag na tayo sumunod sa lahat ng kabustuhan nila. But I'd like to also add something because the problem comes from the political side and the leadership. Let us all get involved in politics. Kayo! It's not enough to be good church leaders, to be good lay leaders. We must get involved with governments. You gotta get involved with governments if you shy away from politics. Let's stop the notion that politics is dirty, the politicians are bad, therefore I don't want to be identified with them. Eh, pagkanyan tayo ng ganyan, sabi nga ni Father de Sousa, nature hates vacuum. If the good people do not immerse themselves in governance, in politics, then the bad will always be running the show. So, Mary Raya Rito, ngayon pa lang, paghandaan na natin, 2013, kailangan lahat ng mga mamamayan tumipili ng mga taong karapat dapat. Pero, papagawin ko na yung sinabi ni Father Berry, ako yung future senator. Father, I'm not running for the Senate. Baka kalahin nila yung mga kampanya na ako. Kayo ang aking hinihilingan, pumili na tayo ng mga taong karapat dapat. Ngayon pa lang, kung pwede, down to the barangay level, Let's choose the right barangay chairman, city council, town council, municipal council, municipal mayors, congressmen. Let us vote for congressmen, congressional candidates who will defend and prom promote life. Senators, let us choose our senators and screen them properly. Kung meron kayo nakikita, kausapin na ninyo. You better run for office, we will help you. So that... Hindi sila mabigla. Pagdating na 2013, sabihin lang, hindi ako ready. Eh hindi, kailan tayo magiging ready? We urge all of you to do this. Campaign your household, go out in every the streets, go out in your community, choose the right people, let's put them in government, let's kick all of these people out who are now mismanaging our affairs. Thank you very much for this opportunity.